Yes, there are actually, uh, even very recently, uh, some sig significant uh, UI changes that mm -hmm. probably don't immediately pop to the eye, but I do think they are going to change the look significantly. Mm -hmm. As an example, there's one thing that Carl implemented like just a few days ago, mm -hmm. and um, people always complain that uh, applications like Dolphin, the main view with the folders was always within a outline, a blue outline mm. that was very ugly. And we actually spent years wanting to get rid of that. And now we did. And now all the views are very uh, sleek looking with one pixel div uh, divisors, divisors, I don't know. And um, I do think that looks much better. It's not something you'll notice immediately, but all of these things combined are I think gonna change significant significantly the the design. I just looked up KDE blue outline. I found a report about it. I I didn't notice it until it got pointed out. But yeah, no, that is. What was the deal with that? Like, why was that there? So uh, it is to indicate the active view. Sure. So the idea is that you have the window with uh some of the content and then the actual important content is within a box which is the view and you can have multiple view and the right. one you're currently working with has a blue outline to mm -hmm. remind you that, that is the one this was the older design especially when the title bar was the same color as the content of the window so everything blended together so you had to visually show what the view was now we actually have a header barrier a header area at the mm -hmm. top uh, so it's bit different and now it looks much better <laughs> i guess it's not a like it's not a major major change but it is something that i guess is going to slightly change the feel of uh, the feel of it like a little bit yeah and there's many of them like mm -hmm. now the panel i don't know if we are gonna keep this but mm -hmm. currently the panel is floating by default okay that is a difference and, uh, you know, stuff like that. There's hmm. um, probably not at this point because we're this close to the uh, feature freeze, but we will get eventually new icons So for like Dolphin. So all of these small things, small redesigns, they do help out. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I like the idea of a floating panel, actually. I know, I know some people may not be a big fan of it, but, I don't know, I, I spent a lot of time on uh, on macOS when I was younger. So, like, I'm kind of used to that floating dock, floating panel, whatever term you want to use for it. Yeah. yeah panel yeah. when it's filling with and dock when it's small. <laughs> I guess that's, yeah. <laughs> that's no, what I, I call them. I don't know if it's recognized as a term. That's what I call them. <laughs> I don't know. I Yeah. <laughs> It works. Um, yeah, it certainly does work. Um, you know, that... That... I guess it's not, like, major changes that you're going for here, but, like, I can certainly see how they would change that sort of initial perception of it. But obviously, being KDE, like, all of this stuff is, you know, if you don't like it, you just be like, no, disable it. Just go back to, like, I don't, like, unfloat it. Go, go away from that. Yeah. Yes, you can always do that. And the idea was to have some kind of stronger visual identity, especially mm. with Windows that <laughs> lately has been getting very close to our design. Although I do have to say, and this was uh, breaking my heart news, that mm -hmm. after we decided to switch to the floating panel, uh, Windows said that Windows 12 is going to have a floating panel as well. So we were like... Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, <laughs> that was the idea. You have a spy in your midst. <laughs> there is a Windows OS engineer working on KDE. Yeah, when, when everything you do is publicly available and mm -hmm. stuff. There was even the moment when they kind of stalled, but I don't think they did purposely, but the, the slogan. Uh, they came up with a very similar slogan to ours, and we were slightly disappointed in that. But <laughs> what's the uh, what's the slogan? I don't think I've heard this one. 
Uh, our slogan is simple by default, powerful when needed. Right. And I think Windows went with something like uh, uh, simple, out of the box, uh, powerful if you need, or something like that. <laughs> extremely similar, like extremely similar. <laughs> and we're like, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, I love that. <laughs> but, but I mean, okay, it's not that difficult to come up with that sure, sure. simple by default. Or, I, I can happen, but it was a bummer. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the, like the the actual GUI design, though, I have no doubts that Microsoft does examine like what is happening on the desktop environments on Linux. On what is it, it, the same? They would be examining what's happening on macOS. Like they are looking at what others are doing, what is being done well, and ways that they can sort of build upon their own system. I I have no like like sure you can come up with the idea of a floating like panel yourself. But, like, they're, they're not obviously just ignoring what other systems are doing. Like, they're aware of what other systems are doing. Like, that that only makes sense. Whether they're intentionally trying to copy Plasma, that's a whole nother question. Um, but I'm sure they're aware of it. There are some small things which mm -hmm. I guess could be directly inspired by Plasma. Mm -hmm. Stuff like being able to use the scroll wheel on the audio icon in the system tray to change the volume. Mm -hmm. That's a small detail, which is nice, and they did it, and we had it for years, so maybe it came from us. But I don't know how much is actually direct, directly inspired from our work. I tend to think that with our 3% market share total, they don't really look at us much, but maybe I'm pessimistic. 